everyone. This is Vishal from Equity Guru. And today, something different and something different you might see here in the next few weeks to months. And this is now going to be a video where we take a look at the top staff picks among Equity Guru writers here. And I'm going to basically introduce you guys to a plethora of companies. If you want to know more details about this, you can read about these companies on our website. My job here is to break down what I see on the technical charts here. But before we look at the charts of the six companies for this week, a quick little roundup here. So the first company is going to be ProStar, which uh, basically is a company that has patents to digitally capture, record, organize, manage, distribute, and display the precise location of critical underground infrastructure, because uh, it's a maze down there, folks. Uh, there's a lot of stuff there, not just gas pipelines, but uh, sewer lines, water lines, optic cables, all that kind of stuff. And this is a company that's been signing big construction clients. Uh, and the stock, as you can sort of see, is beaten down, which are things I like to see. Uh, so that's the company number one, sole global investment. And this is now just basically a diversified private equity firm looking at the best in class companies. And they have uh, positions in... U.S. cannabis, esports, electric mobility, health and wellness. And you can take a look at some of the companies that are here in the portfolio of Verano. They have your Hydro Farm here as well. So we'll take a look at their chart as well. For you crypto folks, Neptune Digital Assets, the future of finance, growing cryptocurrency assets, through Bitcoin mining, staking, blockchain nodes, and decentralized finance. So if you're Big into some of these coins here if you're big into exchanges and also big into you know investing in in cryptocurrency and you can sort of see uh, their diversification here with uh, blockchain research optimizing investing earnings diversified cryptocurrencies uh, this is a company for you and we'll take a look at their chart because of course bitcoin and cryptos are having a nice few uh, days of trading here and uh, maybe it's leading to a new uptrend and then a company we've talked about in the past, uh, Cult Food Science. And this is uh, obviously a company that deals with investing in property related to the production of cultivated meat and cultured dairy and cell-based uh, foods. And, you know, some of their assets or investments, sorry, include Fiction Foods, uh, Eat Just Inc., Melly Bio. Uh, there's a cool uh, Wagyu beef company here, too, that we saw here. Where'd they go? Uh, here we go, Ohio Valley, which is all about bringing uh, uh, Wagyu beef, and again, all cultured meat and cultured dairy. So if you're into the future of food, this is a company that you wanna take a look at. One of the companies I like to talk about, about a lot is B Vectoring Technologies, uh, you know, shameless plug. I do write an agriculture roundup every week since uh, June of uh, summer of last year, 2021. And you guys know I've uh, been quite bullish on agriculture and I really love this space because there's so much new innovations and, and uh, really exciting innovations. And I think this is one of them where basically you're ensuring crop yield and managing disease uh, and pests through a completely natural innovative solution, which is essentially using honeybees to deliver their, uh, their, their technology. And it's a really cool thing. Uh, check out the video if, if you have a chance. It's all about using natural pollination and commercially rear bees. But of course, as I said, you can read our articles, which are up on the Equity Guru website. And then the last one, which is actually a biggie, and this is Finning Technology. Uh, Finning is essentially the guys who run all the contracts for Caterpillar here in Canada. So if you're bullish on infrastructure, if you're bullish on uh, building things, but also, I guess, you know, oil and mining as well, because uh, you're going to use Caterpillar uh, vehicles for that as well. Um, I know where, you know, I live in Vancouver, they're always building something. <laughs> So there's always some sort of caterpillar machinery out there. So if you're big on that kind of play, uh, th th this is a company for you. So we'll take a look now at some of these charts here. And again, you know, just for the sake of time, I'll, I'll keep it nice and short and sweet. But there's a lot of nice setups here. And uh, I think it's a good time just because a lot of these companies have gotten beat it up. So maybe there is a time to, you know, get an entry here. And, and a lot of this has to do with, you know, the market movement and geopolitical trends and all this economic uncertainty, right? We've seen with the yield curve and all that kind of stuff. So keep keep that in mind while we take a look at these charts. But uh, of course, I'm going to tell you guys that if you are investing in these companies, 
think about them in the long term. I'm going to give you guys sort of a, a trading perspective, or I would say a conservative or safe approach, right? Uh, I'm all about trading in a line with probability. So I want to see certain things break out to basically nullify the downtrends. And you're going to see a lot of downtrends, right? Because a lot of these stocks, as I've said, have gotten beat up. So now it's about assessing them and deciding whether we can gain an entry for a new uptrend. So, you know, MAPS, Pro Star Holdings, MAPS is the ticker, and all of these are going to be on the Canadian exchanges. So every ticker here will be on, on the Canadian exchanges. Uh, a few of them, like Finning, can also be traded on the uh, American exchange if you, if you so desire. But let's take a look here at Pro Star Holdings and a very, very, you know, um, prominent downtrend, right? It's very obvious that the trend here is downwards. And uh, I like this price action here. I'm not going to lie. I like what I'm seeing here where we have this range and you guys who follow me or read my work know I love these type of ranges because after a downtrend, it basically signifies, you know, a shift in, in, uh, in it could signify a shift in a trend, right? Because it's showing that the selling pressure is exhausting. Not always the case, right? Because take a look at this, this price action here. We also had a range, we had a bit of a breakout, but it didn't actually lead to any um, you know, further sustainment. So I'm trying to get rid of this box here for you. My mouse is being finicky, but it didn't lead to any uh, sustainment uptrend. So you know, we do also have to be careful about that, but I think it has to do something with their earnings that came out, which probably brought the stock down. So basically we're looking at this, we have a range here and you can see I've drawn my resistance line. I'm gonna move it maybe, I'll put it there, but basically we're looking for a close above the 35 to 36 cent zone. And what that will do is we'll have a breakout of the range and that could signify a potential new uptrend that is beginning here. So, so uh, you know, I like what I'm seeing here. We have our resistance there. We also have our support here on, on ProStar. Um, nice setup that I like to look for. And of course, yes, you can buy, you know, in a range as well. I just like to wait for that breakout because I get a bit more probability, you know, telling me that, okay, the trend is likely to go up because if we do not break that resistance, we can continue this range for a long time and maybe even close below and further drift downwards in the downtrend. So uh, good potential here on ProStar Holdings. Uh, soul, soul investment. So, you know, as I said, a lot of these charts look very similar where we've had these major breakdowns uh, for Seoul. You know, we had a breakdown below the $3.10 major support here, which held support multiple times uh, in 2021, we broke below that uh, near the end of the year. And basically all of 2022 has just been drifting downwards and maybe some potential here where we have this nice, large engulfing candle, uh, which is usually very good at, a, at, at any downtrend because it signifies a lot of bulls coming in and putting pressure to, to you know, create a bottom here. So some good potential here. And what I'm looking for now, this is a bit tricky because we don't really have a nice range or, you know, um, a nice reversal pattern to look at. Although, you know, I can draw a downtrend line here uh, indicating, you know, with that engulfing candle, we actually did break out and we did actually close back below what used to be resistant. So it's now acting as new support here. Funnily enough, take a look at this candle on the 31st of March where we actually did retrace and saw buyers step in. So resistance became new support and now we are trending up to this buck 70 level. So I think if we can get this breakout above a buck 75, that's really what the bulls want to see. But uh, just looking at this price action, folks, I'm not going to lie. I think this breakout here maybe was the, uh, the signal for a new uptrend to begin. We took out basically the buck 50 zone. It's held as support here as well. So Hey, you know, this might be a good one as a swing trade, and you put your stop losses here uh, below a buck 50. And if we do break above a buck 70 here, I think that would be a good sort of sign to add on more and ride this for a move up to this $2 zone. And if we take that $2 out, folks, you know, we're looking at the $3 zone. And I would look at the Russell, the small caps index, uh, just sort of see what happens there, because a lot of their investments seem to be in that sort of space. So if you see a big move in the small caps, you know, Soul Global here is one that can definitely run on that bullishness. So really nice structure, really nice breakout. Keep this one on your radar. We're taking a look here at Neptune Digital Assets. And I did sort of hint at this one saying it looks quite exciting just because what Bitcoin and Ethereum have been doing. 
And we actually have, or are in the process of maybe a head and shoulder pattern, a reversal head and shoulder pattern. So what we're lacking right now, I'm gonna try to find my good old arrow sign here is we have our left shoulder here, we have our head here, and maybe this is going to be our right shoulder. And what we need though, of course, is that breakout. And funnily enough, our resistance here is sort of at that 50 cent zone, 50 cent to 52 and a half cent zone. So you get a close above this resistance here, uh, that is your trigger for the inverse head and shoulder pattern. And you can see, you know, again, looking quite exciting given what's happening in the crypto space. You can also say a downtrend here has been nullified, a large engulfing candle, just like we saw with Seoul. And maybe this pullback will get bid up and we get a higher low here. But I will add there is earnings coming up. Uh, the earnings, it looks like, is on, or on May 4th. So keep that in mind that that is, yeah, a month from now, a month from when I'm recording this video. So keep an eye out on that, um, especially if we do break above this resistance and we continue to rally, um, just maybe take some profits uh, heading into that earnings period if you get a nice run in Neptune digital assets. Uh, cold food, so this is the one that's uh, a bit different, potential bottoming here uh, or potential just slice. And um, if we do slice below this 25 cent zone, which is holding as major support. Um, there's a huge gap here that could potentially be filled and we might even see ourselves somewhere at 10 cents. Um, but I'm optimistic for the long term, given that, uh, you know, we're going to be seeing a lot of food headlines, food rationing headlines, food price headlines uh, in the future. So maybe something like cult food and, and cultured food uh, is one to consider for the long term. So Maybe not like a trade entry just right now. If you can get in cheaper on that breakdown, potentially a good acquisition. So let's keep an eye out on this 25 cent zone. And if we do find some support and build a base here, maybe we can get a breakout above 28 cents and then ride this for a new uptrend. So that's called food sciences for you. B vectoring, uh, quite exciting. Just because we are at a huge support area, huge support zone that has held multiple times. And you can see here in the past uh, few weeks here, actually, um, we have been holding this support. So we always test this 22 and a half, 23 cent zone and the bidders jump in. And it's because this is basically previous all time record low. So if we break below this and we get a close below that, the stock could tumble uh, a bit further. But right now, a lot of traders and investors are betting on big bidders coming and holding this support up. And you can sort of see that my moving average and the trend is beginning to shift. So, you know, I like this in terms of bidding at support, buying at support, but maybe there's a few more signals that we can wait for. Maybe a nice green candle indicating a large amount of buyers breaking above 25 cents. That can sort of tell you that, okay, we've nicely created a bottom here at 22 and a half cents. So this is the one that, you know, I'm keeping very close to the top of my radar just because how important this is at a technical zone. And, you know, it's something that we can act on rather quickly here on B vectoring. So I'm, I'm liking the setup here, but just waiting for a bit more, um, you know, uh, price action to determine a nice entry. And then finally, you know, the big boys spinning. These boys, do, or these guys, not boys, this company does pay a dividend of 23 cents. So this is maybe one of those companies that you just, you know, acquire monthly and just get the dividends on, right? Because uh, these are a big company. And you can see here, you know, for 2021, they haven't really done they haven't really done much. They were just ranging, um, and then we got that breakout in October of 2021, gave it all back up. But basically, for this year, we've been in a nice, decent uptrend in 2022, starting from basically the end of December here, working our way up. We have our higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, and uh, we just recently hit a price of around forty dollars here. Had a pretty bad red day on Friday, on April 1st. Um, but have come back up on the following day to rally about 2.9% <clears throat> here, back up to around the $38 zone. So a bit tricky on this one. You know, this is not one maybe that you want to just trade per se. I think this is a much more of a bigger company that you might want to accumulate, hold long-term and add every month because of the dividends, um, betting on, you know, the global economy and betting on people building things in general. <laughs> Right? If, if you're bending, we're always going to build on things and we, we go in these cycles. 
something like Finney is, uh, you know, could be a cornerstone for your portfolio. And I think the big day will be obviously May 9th when they do release <clears throat> their earnings for quarter one of 2022. And you can see here whenever they do release earnings, uh, so far it's been a uh, nice positive surprise for quarter four of 2021. Um, not so much for the quarter three. And you can see after that earnings came out, the stock actually did sell off quite heavily. But since the last earnings that came out on, uh, just on February 8th, 2022, we had a nice little gap up and an uptrend here. So uh, can't really tell you, you know, can't really say much in terms of like technical trades here. There is a bit of an uptrend here, but I, I just think this is one that you don't necessarily want to trade. This is one that, you know, you want to sort of acquire and take those dividends going forward and make it a cornerstone of your portfolio. So those are the six companies. And once again, uh, if you want more detail, please do read our articles on Equity Guru, Equity Guru, where we go into more details about each of these individual companies. My job was just to break down some of the technical charts here. And as you can see, we have some nice charts to work with. So if you enjoyed this video, folks, give it a thumbs up. But let me know in the comments uh, which one of these companies is your favorite. Um, and if you also have any other questions or companies you want me to cover, let me know in the comments below. Be sure to follow us at all our Equity Guru social media links in the description box below. And I'll catch you guys all in our next Chart Attack video.